Hello, everyone. My name is Nina Delavari. I'm a fifth year surgical resident at Wayne State University. I'm here with Dr. Backwitz, a cardiothoracic surgeon at Wayne State. We thank the STS for allowing us to participate in the eight and eight series. Today, we would like to talk about thromboelastogram in the ICU. We will start out with a case study of a typical patient who returns to the ICU after undergoing a surgical aortic valve in a cabbage times three. You notice in the first few hours that while he's hemodynamically stable, his chest tube output continues to be 300 cc's of bloody fluid an hour. An ISTAD is performed at bedside and the labs are as follows. His hemoglobin is nine, platelets are 75,000, PT is 22, PTT is 45, INR is 1.8. A TEG is also sent. Our knee-jerk response may be to give the patient FFP and platelets, but our goal is to help you interpret the patient's tag to tailor his transfusion to his specific needs. Whole blood thromboelastogram is assessing global hemostasis. The thromboelastogram includes both primary and secondary hemostasis. Primary hemostasis refers to platelet aggregation and platelet plug formation in a phase of hemostasis that is a response to immediate vascular injury. This platelet plug adheres to the endothelial wall and limits bleeding. Secondary hemostasis results in formal stable clot formation. It involves enzymatic activation of coagulation proteins that function to produce fibrin as a reinforcement of the platelet plug. Gradually, over time, the plug will be dissolved by fibrinolysis. The TEG incorporates both of these stages of hemostasis and includes their interaction. The TEG gives us a visualization of the viscoelastic changes that occur in vitro coagulation. A sample of the patient's blood is placed in a curvette, which rotates slowly to imitate sluggish venous flow and to activate coagulation. A sensor SAF is inserted into the sample. When a clot forms between the cup and the sensor, the sensor transmits torque and this movement results in a tracing. The tracing gives us information about the speed and the strength of the clot formation. This is a standard tag tracing. The test provides four basic parameters, the first of which is here, the R time. The R time or reaction time is measured in minutes and represents the time from the start of the test until fibrin formation. This is the time until the first evidence of a clot. The R time reflects coagulation factor activity. The next component is here and is the K time. The K value, which is also measured in minutes, reflects the time taken to achieve a certain level of clot strength. This strength is usually an amplitude of 20 millimeters. This gives us information about the speed of the clot formation. The next value is the alpha angle, which is reported in degrees. This measures the speed of the fibrin filled up in the cross-linking phase. The alpha angle is the tangent of the curve that is made as the K is reached. The final parameter is the maximal amplitude, the MA, which is here. The MA is measured in millimeters and represents the ultimate strength of the fibrin clot. It is a direct measure of the highest point of the TEG curve and represents clot strength. Finally, the TEG may report an LY30. This is the clot lysis at 30 minutes. It indicates the percent decrease amplitude 30 minutes after the maximal amplitude. The visual representation of these parameters is provided on a graph that looks like the one on your screen. Platelet mapping is a special tag which aims to measure the effects of antiplatelet drugs on platelet function. Platelet mapping can test the efficacy of ADP receptor inhibitors such as clopidogrel, arachidonic acid pathway inhibitors such as aspirin, and G2B3A inhibitors. The purpose of platelet mapping assays is to determine the MA reduction that is present with antiplatelet therapy it will report a percent inhibition in aggregation. With the information provided by TEG tracings, we can guide the blood products and medications to give to our bleeding patient. If the TEG demonstrates a prolonged R time, the patient is hypocoagulable and likely has a clotting factor deficiency. They require fresh frozen plasma. Prothrombin complex concentrate, or PCC, may be used instead of fresh frozen plasma in patients that cannot tolerate the volume of an FFP transfusion, for example, in patients with right heart failure. If the TEG demonstrates a low alpha angle with a normal MA, the patient has hypofibrinogenemia. These patients require cryoprecipitate. If the TEG demonstrates a low maximal amplitude, the patients will likely need platelets. This can be due to thrombocytopenia or thrombocytopathia. 
In patients in DIC, you may see a prolonged LOI-30 time. These patients may require antifibrinolytic therapy. TEG has been studied wildly in the bleeding trauma patient as well as the adult cardiac surgery patient. This is a prospective randomized study which looked at the efficacy of hemostatic therapy guided by either conventional PT and INR or point of care TEG. The TEG, patients in the TEG group had statistically significant chest tube output at 6, 12, and 24 hours postoperatively. A TED-guided approach decreased the overall requirement of blood while targeting and providing the patient with the exact products they need. Back to our patient in the ICU, the TED is back and as follows. The R time is 14.2, which is elevated. The average time is about five, with normal being below 9.1. The K time is 2.3, also elevated, normal being below 2.1. The alpha angle is low at 60. However, the MA is appropriate at 65. The patient's tag demonstrates that his coagulation factors are depleted. We were able to transfuse the patient FFP and the bleeding stopped. In summary, TEG is a valuable point of care test which allows us to measure where our patient is on the hemostasis continuum from thrombosis to bleeding. It gives us information about the rate, strength, and stability of the clot and allows us to tailor blood products to the individual needs of our patient.